everybody welcome to another video this one is the Kiwami 4 the Iwata Kiwami 4 for a three stage base coat although it's actually four stages because we need to uh, start off with a grey before I go into the video I'd just like to say thanks for uh, everybody who's subscribing and watching the videos we get quite a few viewers now or relatively anyway for a small channel so thanks to everybody and if you are enjoying what you see then um, give us a like and a subscription it is appreciated so thank you so as I say the Iwata Kowami 4 now for those that are relatively new to this gun this one is effectively the new Valeria. Now it seems that in the UK, if you ask I what in UK about the Kiwami 4, they the the you know the company line is that it's designed uh, it's not designed for European markets yet and it hasn't been homolog homologated to be used in uh, European markets. So effectively they and not denying it exists because obviously you can't but effectively they're uh, they want to get rid of their old stock I think so you can still get the W400 although as far as I know and anybody correct feel free to correct me if you need to wow. I don't think they make it anymore so it's just purely old stocks coming through and it will eventually be replaced with this so for those, as I say, that those that don't know, this is the replacement. You can get them from Japan. Now I get it. I got them from a, a company called Painting Tools Japan on eBay, but I've since got a few things from them via uh, Instagram, where you can, you know, you can message them, tell them what you want, and they'll give you a price, etc., etc. So. I'll put a link in the bottom of the video. I don't normally do it. Do lots of links in the bottom of the video because I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you what what happened to me. You know, I just bought this, and other people like to know where to buy them from. But if you look on eBay and that, you'll see them. But a lot of the times they're, they're from this company called Painting Tools Japan. So I'll put a, a link to their eBay shop so that you can you know see their stuff. As I say, I've not. I know I'm not in any way involved with them it's just where I got mine from so let's take talk a bit more about what we're doing and where we got the gun from so sorry rather than where we got the gun from so this is a three stage but it turned into a four stage because I, I didn't have any wet on wet primer that was grey so what I've done is I've used a Honda base coat that was grey which is a it's a Honda Sonic Grey, which is NH877P, and it's the first time I've used it. I had the paint made up. I've recently got a, a small paint system, which I will do a video on once I've used it a few times. Uh, not, not in that I'm comparing it to other paint systems, because I've only got one, uh, so I can't compare it. But just so that people know what a paint system is like, and, and you know that a guy at home can effectively have a paint system without it costing the earth. So I will do a video on that. But this is something I got already made up. And what I was surprised at is how, how thin the coverage was. But, it, you know, eventually it went on fine. So it has, as I say, it's a Honda Sonic Grey. And I don't particularly like grey gray cars, but it's quite a, an in fashion, isn't it, grey? People are painting their walls grey, the kitchen's grey, everything's grey. And I've always regarded it as a, a relatively dull colour, but, you know, it is what it is. So that's what we're doing as the first stage. And this gun copes with everything you put through it. Uh, it's got to be, it, and still is, my favourite gun. If somebody says to me, and by that I don't mean favourite full stop, I mean favourite for a, a budget gun, because it's not that expensive. If you buy it without the cut, like I did, and you've got an AZ4 or an AZ3 or something like that, or a W300, you don't need the cut because the cut's the same. It's the same uh, screw thread. But if you need to buy it with a cup, it will come in about 200 and... Well, it depends what cut, to be honest, but it'll come in about £210. So it's not, it's not loads of money. What's that, about 100 and... 180, uh, sorry, 280 US dollars at the moment. So it's not loads and loads of money. So, you know, it's a very, very good do-it-all gun. 
and it's not a jack of jack of all trades, master of none, because it actually does them, do does everything very very well. Now this is only a 1.3. You can get them in 1.8. I think you can get them in 1.6, 1.2. You can get them in a lot of different variations. But obviously for base and clear, 1.3 or 1.4 is is normally ideal. So I've just got it in 1.3. Although the actual um, actual tips are the same as the W400. The cap isn't. The actual well, the, I, I think the actual cap, the inner part of the cap where the air horns are, are the same. But the outside thread is different, so you can't interchange them without actually taking the centre of the cap out. So they are sort of like a, a, a modified gun, and I think I've said it before, it's probably to stop people using different bits, and you, you have to buy new bits really, because that's what the manufacturers do, I guess. But they're a very, very good all-round gun. I can't emphasise how much I enjoy using it, considering that it costs, you know, £220. It will lay base coat down really, really well. It will lay clear coat down really, really well. And we're using, effectively, three lots of, of base coat on this. Uh, I only I only actually did this as a, an, ex, a, an experiment, and it's because I've got the paint for nothing. I've got a litre of each. Being a, a free stage, you get the, uh, the ground coat, which is this, which is going on now which is a, a white ground coat, and then you get the pearlescent outside coat, um, mid coat as it's called, and then obviously you go over it with a normal clear. And I'm only doing it because I got it by mistake. I actually ordered two litres of a different Honda colour, and they made a mistake. I got it right, but they made a mistake on the uh, the colour. This one is a, a, a Honda white sparkle pearl. And the number I give them was just slightly different. I haven't got the number in front of me, so I can't give you it now, but I will write it in the description. But the number they give me was just slightly different, and it, it come in two litres, one litre of each, of the ground coat and the uh, mid coat. So I thought I'd just do this as an experiment, really, to, to show you uh, you guys me doing it, really, and to use the gun, because it gives it a, a good workout. So that, that's why I'm doing it, not because it actually needs to be done, it's just just purely as an experiment really. And what you'll find, and that's another video I'm doing as well, is you need to be careful of the ground, of the, the, the coat underneath, the ground coat, the colour, if you're trying to match these whites. I'm not trying to match anything here, as I say, I'm just, literally just having a play. But if you're trying to match colours, the ground coat, the... the, the base coat so your primed coat needs to be a certain color often to make it match not not with a lot of colors but with quite a few colors and it will just come out you know if you've got one over a white and one over a, a black one will be a darker color than the other even if you put four or five layers of base coat on it will still come up lighter than the other so pay attention to what the paint manufacturer says if they're giving you a colour, they normally say it needs to go over a certain colour. And with this, as I say, it was a mid, a, effectively a mid grey, which is ideal because that Honda, that Honda colour was ideal. So that, that's what we did. And this gun, just talking about the gun again, it's it's a really lovely gun to use. It's better than the Valeria to use, not in the way it actually sprays because it, it's perfectly comparable it's about the same you can't split them but just feel it just feels better in the hand and if you've watched my other videos on the Taiwan before I'm just re-emphasizing really of how different it is it is to hold it just feels much more much more user friendly to hold it but don't expect an input a performance increase because it's literally just not there so another tip with this this is actually the the cup on this is off the AZ-4, the little mini gun. It's a 200 milliliter cup. And just put the th that little black lever you can see, or looks like a lever, at the top is actually the the air hole, so that the uh, so you don't get like a vacuum inside the cup. And if you are using that, and you're not using a, a PP, uh, PPS cups, if you are using that, then make sure that that is is pointing towards you or up from the gun because you'll get a little funnel of paint coming down that little black 
lever, which is a breather actually, but you'll get a little funnel of paint and it will muck your paint job up. So do try and not uh, have it pointing downwards because it will surprise you. I mean, I've done that a few times. I've put it on there and then you suddenly get a drip and you wonder where it's coming from and you realise why. So now I've always got it in my head to make sure that that's pointing backwards. And for things like these tanks, it's absolutely ideal. This tank takes about about 220 millilitres of base or clear, depending which one it is. Uh, I went for I put settings on the gun anyway, but I went for the first on the first ground coat and the first grow. I had it free out on the fluid, but you you might as well go full fluid. It depends on your substrate. If you're not sure of the substrate, it's better off than to just put a few small coats just to get it on there if you think you're going to get a reaction or something just a few small coats just to slowly put it on there and get some heat in it as well because the quicker the base coat dries out the the, the less chance you've got of getting a reaction because it's the solvent that's in the paint even if it's a water-based paint it, there's much less chance of it with a water-based paint but if it's a water-based paint you've still got a small amount of solvent in there or waterborne should I say you've still got a small amount of solvent in there and it can react with the substrate you know what's underneath so just unless if you're not sure just put a few more coats it doesn't matter if you put four or five coats as long as you get the desired shade you want it doesn't it doesn't really matter but with this the first uh, I'll say primer coat for want of a better word primer coat and the um, ground coat was literally free out on the gun first coat and in the other coats was full fluid because it, it just needed full fluid really. and after that the mid coat was just two coats of mid coat at full fluid and the clear coat is also two coats at full fluid and you'll see that on this clear coat and another thing you need to look out for as well if you're you know new to this stuff is when you look at the technical data sheet for various clear coats etc it may say like a uh, a two third or a three quarter first coat and then a full wet second coat well with this u pole it's only a cheap clear coat with this u pole it actually says two full coats which is why often on my videos you'll see me doing two full coats because it's what it's what the manufacturer recommends and it's always good to read the technical data sheet of whatever you're doing because it will give you some good hints and tips to follow because the manufacturer makes a paint and they they do experiment with it to make sure it's it's right and then they pass that information on to you so you know you don't always have to follow it but it's certainly a really good place to start you get a lot of people on uh, these forums on uh, Facebook and uh, you know other social media sites and things like that and people put some questions sometimes like you know anybody use this what you know what's the best way of using it <coughs> whatever it be you know clear coat primer or whatever and you know the normal reaction is we'll look at the technical data sheet because there's a lot of information on there that will help you if you're new to spraying something and it's a really really good place to start and the same goes for the gun when you look at gun settings look at what the manufacturers recommend and then just tweak it slightly and you know you get certain things like an lph 80 for example a little small mini gun i used to use that on nearly two bar and then i realized that i think somebody pointed out in one of my early videos that you actually only need to use it on one bar that's all it's recommended for and i didn't even look i hadn't looked at the instructions so now I use it on one bar, about 1.1 bar, and it's absolutely fine. You get less overspray, and it's just as good at doing what it's doing. So have a little experiment, but use what the manufacturers say as a good starting point, because they do know their stuff. They're doing this all the time, experimenting with their guns, and it might not be exactly what you want for what you're doing, but it's a really, really good place to start. So a little bit more about the gun, because I know a lot of people watch the videos for the gun it's as i say i think i think it will be available in europe within time because 
as far as I know in Japan, they're just not making the W400s, and that's where that's where they're all made. So I think it's just a matter of the European importers uh, getting rid of their stock, really, and then they then the, you know they'll they'll come along. But typical importers, really, they just wash their hands of trying to give people any information or anything like that because they just want to talk about what they what they do and what they import. The same as the warranty thing. The warranty thing annoys you sometimes. If you buy if you buy something like I have right here from Japan, obviously they won't cover that in Europe. I say obviously, but it's the way they it's the way they do things and it's a way of making sure you buy them from the proper suppliers, which I can understand because they're normally separate companies. The companies that import the stuff into the country are a separate uh, entity so they don't want to be picking up the bills for your gun that they've got to repair under warranty because they haven't had the profit from selling that gun in the first place so i can understand it but it's just that sometimes they seem a little bit negative about something and at the end of the day you're looking at the importer as being the you know i was a europe or whatever, you know, so, you know, that may not be their name, I don't know, I haven't looked. But if, if it's Iwata Europe, for example, um, you're looking at them as representing the, the Iwata company in Europe, but it's not the way they see it. They only deal with the stuff that they deal with, which, you know, I guess is the, the way of the world, really. But anyway, uh, thoroughly highly recommended gun. Where does it stand? on my list of like best guns but it's it's not it, it's not the best gun and it's not not a bad gun it's it's up there with the gti pro light and i know a couple of people asked me to do a comparison video, video between this and the gta pro light sorry gti pro light or is it pro, just pro light now it's called isn't it uh, to, to give them an idea of, of which one's better and I don't think really you get much difference between the two the biggest <coughs> difference between the GTI Pro Lite is that there's quite a few different caps etc available for the uh, Pro Lite whereas with this there is but it comes at a great great expense and the problem being that something like a wbx which is the version of this which is for normally waterborne paints is twice the price literally twice the price in fact it may well be even more than twice the price and it, it's purely the cap that's different and the um sometimes the nozzle the nozzle on the WB, wbx for example is a, a split nozzle or a tulip nozzle as I, I call it and that's the only difference so those two small components <coughs> sorry those two small components are the only difference yet the price is doubled so it's a bit more of what the market will take really rather than the amount that uh, it costs to make I'm sure that's the case and it certainly would have kept the case with a, a lot of things uh, but it's not necessarily the cost it, it costs to make, it's what the market will bear it selling for, really. So, with, with this, there is the, the chance to buy lots of different setups of this gun, but they're nowhere near the good value. And with the GTI Pro Lite, or Pro Lite, that doesn't seem to apply. You get the, uh, you know, you, get the, you can get it in different caps, etc., all for the same price. <coughs> Sorry, I'm starting to lose my voice. That's the problem with long videos. Yeah, you, you get all the different caps, and they're, they're all the same. They're all the same price. So that's that's a negative point of this. So I'm looking at this being a really, really good value for money gun, purely with the um, the B42 cap, which is the Bellaria cap, effectively. A really, really good value for money, uh, and do everything really, really well. Now this is the final result, and now this was actually a week later, and I'm just trying to get the pearlescent in the sun, really, because it was a time in the UK when we had hardly any sun. 
and hopefully I've done it. The camera really doesn't do it justice. It came out very, very nice. It looks superb to the naked eye. But try as I may, took loads of different videos, trying to get it in the camera, but you couldn't really see it. But I think you'll find it does, you know, I think you'll agree it does a really, really good job. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry I've rab rabbit uh, rabbited on a bit, but it's quite a long video, and I, I don't like putting music on videos too much. So I like to, you know, like, well, I like to chat, really. Okay, then, guys. Well, thanks very much. And um, you keep watching them, and I'll keep them coming. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.